Hey everyone, welcome to Reading the Bible to Cats. Sorry I'm laughing, but um, I'll show you, Henry. So obviously Guster's napping on the hard tiles. Is that comfortable, Guster? But hold on, let's show you, Henry. Henry! Are you looking from above? I just don't think I can hold the camera like this because I'm on the floor with Custer. So we'll focus on the lovely Custer who looks very, um, what's the word? Well, he looks very sleepy. All right, well, let's, it's, um, I'm I'm recording this on Friday, June twenty first, which I think is the first day of summer technically here in the the states. So um, I'm going to read Psalm twenty one. Best, are you ready? Okay, let's read Psalm twenty one. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. The king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. You came to greet him with rich blessings and placed a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You have bestowed on him splendor and majesty. Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. Through the unfailing love of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear for battle, you will burn them up as in a blazing furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. Hey, everyone, that's the end of Psalm 21. And uh, yeah, you know, sometimes lately as I'm reading the some of the Psalms, they do seem like messianic Psalms, like this one to me seems well we know you know king david was a king obviously king david but he was also a prophet so but this feels especially towards the end like he's talking about the second coming you know the messianic um the when the messiah comes and overthrows the enemies of god and of Israel, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I told you in the last video um, that when I go to sleep at night, I put on the audio um, Bible. Uh, well, I put on David Sukkot. I, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but anyway, he's an actor with a wonderful ability to narrate the Bible. So I listened to him reading the book of Revelation, and um, it's very fascinating, but it does end up putting me to sleep, strangely. <laughs> but, but anyway, this psalm kind of reminds me of some of what I read in the book of Revelation, you know, which Revelation, you know, apocalypse, the word apocalypse, which is Everybody is pretty much familiar with the word apocalypse or apocalyptic, but basically it just means unveiling. 
And so, you know, you have the book of Revelation or the apocalypse. Um, it basically just means the unveiling, the revealing of Jesus, you know, the Messiah. And so Revelation really deals with his second coming. And, um, yeah, it's totally different that from the first coming. <laughs> I just say that. I laugh, yeah. Because the first coming, I mean, he came in order to die for our sins and to be that sacrifice, you know, and and it it, it wasn't truly expected in that way, even though the prophets did point to the fact that there would be a suffering servant messiah and even in some orthodox um or hasidic maybe judaism there's an idea of two messiahs like what is it messiah ben yosef or messiah son of joseph and messiah ben david david or messiah son of david so there are some branches of Judaism that explain the two different comings of the Messiah. Instead of seeing two different comings, they see two different Messiahs. And so then they would, they would see like a suffering Messiah, like the um, Messiah, son of Joseph. And then they would see the conquering Messiah, Messiah, son of David or the king. Um, but really, it's the same person, the same Messiah coming two different times. The first time to suffer, the suffering servant, which Isaiah talks about, and, um, you know, that he would be that ultimate sacrifice, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And then the second coming is the conquering, the, you know, the, the kingly coming of Messiah, son of David, where he's, you know, we all know what that means. <laughs> it's like he's coming, coming back to set things right and get rid of evil. Um, but he's the lamb that's, he's still the lamb, but he comes as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's still the lamb. But, you know, as I'm listening to Revelation, it's interesting because, well, I can't wait till we get to the book of Revelation, actually. It's the only book with a blessing if you read it or, or oh, no, we have to focus on Guster there. Um, only book with a blessing if you read it or, or listen to it or heed it. But there's a part in Revelation that talks about this vision of the Lamb, the, the Messiah, who's been slain but he's the only one who can open the seals of this the seven seals of this scroll in heaven that the the, the father is holding and then he 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 opens the seals um and it's all a response to the prayers of his people on earth. And in, in this, now, gosh, do I have to find it? Well, the thing that, it's, it's in Revelation, I forget exactly where, but um, it, it talks about the, the wrath of the Lamb. And, and when I heard that, I was like, wow, that sounds like an oxymoron. You know what I mean? Because... You don't think of a lamb as having wrath, but, um, you know, and that wrath is just his, his just response to evil and the cries of his people on earth who are suffering and oppressed. That's my interpretation of it all. But anyway, so I think Psalm 21, as I'm reading the end of Psalm 21, it kind of reminds me of some of what I read in Revelation, you know? Like, verse 8, your, oh, now I keep 
messing up the there, Gester. Um, your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. When you appear for battle, you will burn them up as in a blazing furnace. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath, and his fire will consume them. You will destroy their descendants from the earth, their posterity from mankind. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. You will make them turn their backs when you aim at them with drawn bow. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. It reminds me of Revelation. And when, when it says, though they plot evil against you, um, it, you know, like in Revelation, the the enemies are plotting evil against the people of the Lamb, like the they're oppressing and and slaughtering um, the people who believe in Jesus and Messiah. Anyway, that's it. I'm fascinated. But, of course, um, probably nobody wants to hear about wrath and judgment. <laughs> right. But here, look at a cute kitten. Look at that cute kitty. Um, but the good news is that Jesus saves us and loves us and is available to us as the lamb that takes away the, the sins of the world and our sins and gives us his Holy Spirit and eternal life and the fruit of his spirit, love, joy, peace, all of that good stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, I guess let's say a prayer. Lord, um, I thank you for your word and that I'm kind of coming more I'm coming to a place of acceptance in terms of some of the things in the past that I've really been bothered by, namely even the word wrath, which I have never liked that. Who, who does like that word? But as I, as I grow, I'm coming to, to a place of acceptance and maybe some understanding of, of your character and nature, which is holy and can't, um, you know, can't abide with evil. And so you've made a way of salvation for us. And then you love us because the word says that you are love and that you are light and that you are life. Um, if I've said anything that doesn't make sense or is in error, please forgive me and help people to forget it. <laughs> I pray for everybody who is listening or watching and ask that they would feel your love, your peace, your grace, and your joy, and that they would know they're not appointed to wrath, and that in you there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We're not under condemnation were your children, beloved, dearly beloved, and dearly loved. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the peace of Israel and for the hostages for freedom. And pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, everybody. It's funny because I've never, well, I, I've told you I came out of well, I've told you that, you know, my mother was Jewish. My father wasn't, but it turned out that my mother was the believer in the family. Like she believed, ended up believing in her Messiah and Jesus. But anyway, I wasn't raised in the church or anything like that. But I ended up getting into the new age. And that made sense to me because it was all like love and light and everything. And I hated any mention of like sin or evil or wicked or whatever. It was really offensive to me or wrath. I didn't understand it. And even when I became a Christian, I let the Lord know I didn't understand the concept of like hell, which I still don't really want to go to. <laughs> but 
I mean, think about, not literally go there, but, um, but so now, all these years later, I think I'm starting to understand it a little more. <laughs> Maybe understand the nature of God a little more. But the good news is that he is love. So we just have to rest in that. All right. I'm just babbling at this point. Right, Henry? Okay, well, t right, Guster? Okay. Right, Henry? Where's Bug? Where's Bug, your favorite toy? All right. I'm babbling. Have a good day. <laughs> Bye.